let me tell you why you should print my two-part super satisfying maker coin. Ah, the maker coin. It's become a symbol for the whole maker movement, especially 3D printing. A little while ago, when Angus from Makers Moves made a video encouraging people to make their own maker coin, I decided I would add it to my list. I didn't want to do just any old maker coin, however, I wanted to do something that would challenge me as the designer and challenge you as a 3D printer. That's why my maker coin is actually only half a maker coin. When one half is shown, it really doesn't look like a maker coin at all, but if you print two of them and then put them together, it goes snugly with a satisfying click. I hope you agree this is an original approach and worth printing on your printer. Still not convinced? Let me give you a few more reasons to print this or any other maker coin. Firstly, maker coins are very small. That means they're ideal for using up small amounts of filament like those that you get in sample packs and that means they print very quickly. On my Mark III, one half of this takes about 20 minutes which means it's about 40 minutes for both halves. This is a hell of a lot shorter than a Benchy, and although it's not as useful as a torture test, it still has some challenging parts for you and your 3D printer. The first of those is a concave surface that faces down towards the printer bed. A normal maker coin has a flat bottom and a surface that slopes inwards on the top. This one only has a very small amount of contact area for adhesion with the bed, and then it has a fairly challenging overhang that will definitely test your printer's capabilities. Second reason is for tolerancing. This has been designed with a 0.1 millimeter gap between the two halves, but the mating surfaces also have draft. Fortunately enough, my Mark III was accurate enough to get this thing fitting together first go. But on my Cocoon Create Touch, it's a little bit rough and it doesn't quite go together without some tweaking. It'll be a nice project for me to refine my slicing profile and simplify 3D until the two halves fit nicely together and sit nice and flush. Another perk of my design is the fact that it is only one half of a maker coin. This means you can do the two halves in different prints and different colors. What a great way to test how two colors go together for a bigger project. One other thing that Angus mentioned in his video that I really liked about maker coins is that you can use them to trade in the community. If you're meeting other 3D printers face to face at some sort of expo or meetup, bring some maker coins, trade them with people, and then you'll have something to remember the great people you've met by. I should also mention that this thing is hollow. There's just a little bit of space between the two halves and that provides you with a place to hide something in a place that no one would ever expect. Anyway, that's enough talk about why you should print one of these. Let's look at how I did it. Here we have our finished maker coin and what a handsome beast it is. It's got our TT or teaching tech on the top it's got the nice concave top surface and it's got the gear style around the outside with the nice fillets. But you'll notice here something strange is happening. You can see a seam that goes around the maker coin. So let's have a look at the part and then we'll retrace our steps and work out how it was designed. So here is the part that you print and in fact you print it facing this way. And at this stage it looks nothing like a maker coin. And that's because it's designed to have two of these and they clip together and that's what makes the final coin. Let's explore how this was achieved. So here is our base sketch. At its most simple level, it's just like a normal maker coin. It's got this surface here, which I've tweaked over and over to make it more printable and I've ended up with an overhang of 61 degrees. It's got a nice radius on the outside. I've got these sketches in place for later on, ready for the locking rings. And when we revolve it, it looks like this, somewhat like a normal maker coin. Next thing we have is our sketch, which when we view from above is for the cutouts of the coin. Then when we take that cut, add a fillet and pattern both of them around the outside, we end up with our classic maker coin shape. Here's where things start to get a little bit different. We divide up the shape into six segments and we have two rings here and they've got a 0.1 millimeter gap between them. And that is to create just a little bit of clearance to help the things slot together. From that sketch we have two extrudes. The first one cuts out these outside pieces and then the second one cuts out the center section to exactly halfway. If we switch back to our assembly view at this stage you can see that it's pretty close to fitting. However when you look from the sides these walls are vertical which means they're going to slide against each other and that's going to make it a lot lot harder to get the two parts together and indeed to get them apart. So the next two steps was to apply draft and if you look from side on you'll notice this is on a very slight angle. Let's edit to come inside and see what it would look like without the draft. You can see if we slide our preview to the left that's how it started 
and that's how it finished. So five degrees draft there will really help the pieces slide against each other, but still be really snug at the end. Our next step was to import the Teaching Tech logo, and you can see I imported a DXF here, but there was some troubles with that, so I had to manually draw part of the shapes just to get it working how it should be. After that, we extrude it back towards this face, and we have our main graphics for the surface. You can see next in the feature tree was another two lots of draft, and that is on this here and this here. Both of them are angled five degrees once more, and that's just to allow the pieces to slot together as easily as possible later on. The next thing we have are the locking rings. So if you remember back in sketch one, we had two little circles here. This is the time that we apply them. So we revolve one of them around as a solid and add a fillet. And then the second one we revolve around as a hole and once again add a fillet. And we change the size of the circle and the fillets. So this one on the outside is just a little bit bigger than the one on the inside to stop them binding up. Our final two features can't be seen until we switch to the underside, but basically we hollow out this section here. If we open up the extrude and look at the before and after, we can see that it's solid and when it's done, it is hollow. That creates a cavity to store something, maybe some O-rings, I'm not sure, but it means it uses less plastic and it prints just that little bit faster because of it. So back to our assembly to have a look inside the finished part and to do that, we're gonna turn on a section view we zoom in here, we can see how the pieces meet. We've got this very slight gap of 0.1 millimeters, and you can see that the fillet on the inside is just a little bit smaller than the one on the outside, and that is to help the pieces mate without binding. And as you can see by my printed ones, this works really, really well. Since I recorded that, I've improved the design yet again, iterating to try and make it just that little bit nicer to print and fit together. I think I'm up to about my 11th version now, and this one here is the first. It didn't have the 0.1 millimeter gap, which means you can push it together. It's nice and snug, but you won't get it apart without the use of pliers, or in my case, using my teeth. I strongly encourage you to follow the link in the description below to download and print my Maker Coin. It'll give you a nice test for your printer settings, as well as a nice way to test out small amounts of filament. I also strongly encourage you to try designing and printing your own one. I had a lot of fun doing this one and challenging myself to come up with something innovative. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Here's my Maker Coin. I hope you download and print it. If you do, let me know in the comments. Looking forward, there's going to be a bunch more content coming up where I design something and provide it free of charge for you to download. I promise these projects are going to grab your attention and be really fun to print. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.